All right, this is Prophet Six, family prophet to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. God bless you. I came unhinged, y'all. I gotta say it. I came off the hint, came off the hinges. The hardware fell off the door. The door fell on the floor, got trampled, shredded, put in a shredder, and uh, now it's compost. Okay, so I'm gonna try my best to stick to what I'm gonna say, but I just wanna let you know today is. Today is the twenty seventh day commemorating the Rwanda massacre that happened in, on April 6, nineteen ninety four. Uh, by the way, it was a Christian genocide. The country is ninety nine percent Christian. The Christianity that they have in Rwanda is sixty percent, approximately sixty percent Catholic. 30% Protestants, Protestant, and 10% Seventh-day Adventists, okay? Now, I want to let you know this as well. The Christianity that they have in Rwanda was exported to them from France, Germany, England, Wales, Australia, Belgium, and a and many other countries, but these are the main ones, okay? So this is the fruit that ripens, that that grows, ripens. This is what this is the type of Christianity that we have embedded in us, y'all. Remember, I just told you that the religion that they have there, the, the brand of Christianity that they have was exported from the West. So it's been sold into your heart, my heart, and all the major denominations in the United States and her allied countries in the EU, in England. I just want to let you know that. Don't think you know different than these people. It's in you. You just can't find it. But anyway, I want to stay on topic here. The reason why I'm making this video here is because I want to let you know this. There, there's a scripture that I was meditating on yesterday and this morning when I woke up. And I'm telling you, we as Christians, I'm including myself, we are so naive. And I believe God can save you even if you're naive. I believe that. But I also believe that the vast majority of people who won't yield to the spirit of God, they're naivete. It's going to cause their, it's going to be one of the symptoms, let me say that, of their demise. Now, there's a scripture that I'd like to look at in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Christians love this scripture. And I'm going to tell you one of the main reasons why they love this scripture. The main reason why Christians love this scripture is because they cannot raise up a second generation of born again citizens, you know what I'm going to say, of the kingdom. You notice I didn't say second generation of church members. No, we, we the devil has given us enough church members. <laughs> we need citizens of the kingdom. And the only way you could be a citizen of the kingdom is if you are born again. Are you born again? Are you born? I didn't ask you if you've been baptized. I didn't ask you that. Are you born again? OK. That's what I ask you. Are you born again of the water and of the spirit? And when I say water, the, the baptismal water don't born you again. Jesus said you have to be born again of the water and the, and the spirit and the type of water he's talking about is the type of water that's in John chapter six, seven, verse 38. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The type of water that Jesus is talking about is that which exists in Ezekiel chapter 47. I went out a hundred cubits and the water was up to my ankle. Another hundred cubits, it was up to my waist. Another hundred cubits, it was up to my chest. Another hundred cubits, waters that could not be passed over. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> waters to swim in. Come on now. 
What is waters? It's the word, y'all. It's the word. It's the applied word, the transformative word in the life of the believer. And the only way that word can be transformative is if it's actuated by the spirit of God. That's why he said you got to be transformed by the water and the spirit. Not just the water or water and the spirit. And a lot of Christians think that the water means baptism. No, it doesn't. Baptism doesn't cause you to be born again. Have you? Are, do you live like you're born again? Or do you live the same way that you lived before you were baptized? Well, if you do, you are not born again. You have backslidden. Or you were born again and you backslid. Now, you don't need to be baptized anymore. You just need to be walk in the new life that has been offered to you, that has been opened to you. Through submission to the word of God. That's how you know if you're born again, people. So the scripture that I'm looking at right now in Proverbs chapter 22, verse six is this. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. And it's really interesting that this scripture ties into what I just talked about as it relates to being born again. Train up a child. I can't tell you how many Christians have came to me and I've met and they pine away at how their children have left the faith. And the consolation that they grab hold to in the Bible is this. Well, the Bible does say train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. They don't, un we Christians, we don't understand that scripture. We think that that scripture means when your children are born into the world and you start teaching them the Bible, they will never depart from it. Or if they backslide, they will come back. It don't mean that, people. It means that Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 means train up a child in the way that he is, can go. Guess what that scripture is taking in account? That the, that the child submits to that scripture as he's being trained. And he does not depart from it even in old age. That's what that scripture is telling us. It can't be telling us what most Christians think it's telling us. Well, I did teach my children the Bible when they were little babies. I, they did go to Sunday school. Or And, and, and hey, y'all, let's keep it real. We know that most Christians do not teach the Bible at home. That's apparent. You can just look at some of the Barner research and, and know that. Very few Christians are even biblically illiterate as adults. So you know that they are not teaching the Bible to at home. They're not reading the scriptures. They're not catechizing their children. They're not discipling their children. Like the Bible tells us that in the book of Titus, in the book of Deuteronomy, Timothy. Proverbs chapter one. Proverbs, you see what I'm saying? Christians, Christians don't even sing hymns at home with their children. And they are pulling evidence and statistics that prove this, people. Let me give you something. 80% of children that are raised in so-called Christian homes leave the faith in their first semester of college and never come back in their whole lifetime. And those same parents try to apply Proverbs 22, 6 to those children. Pastors, all of them do the same. They all apply this scripture. And I'm like, now, I've been alive for a while. I went to Sabbath school with young people that were my age. The vast majority of them. I can't. And I'm just this is just me. I can't think of one of them that's converted. And if they are, I don't know nothing about it. Some of them have went off and married uh, Muslim women. 
Some of them have went off and divorced their wives. Some have went off and 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 are engaged in homosexuality, lesbianism, on drugs, alcoholism. I <laughs> I'm talking about the ones that I was a young person as. They they went to Sabbath school. Can't keep a family together to save their life. <laughs> hey y'all, um, it's not just the young people. I know I know adults who can't who, who, who I know older people, not adults. I know older people that can't they they've been in the church all their life and they senior citizens and can't keep their marriage together to save their life and it don't matter if they rich or poor don't matter and many of them that are together their marriages are marriages of convenience they married in name only they got other lovers on the side. They had prostitute houses, brothels, and I'm talking about suppose they devout Christians. So Proverbs 22, 6 people, it's not this 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 scripture is not a, a, a some type of incantation. It's not some kind of spell that a witch puts on you. Well, you know, just give your give your child a Bible, and, and if you give your child a Bible, and, and some Christians, it even it's, it's, it deteriorates even, most of them. Let me say that. It did, well, I gave you a Bible when you was three, and the Bible, and and they equate that as training a child up. I wonder why she's a prostitute now, a Christian prostitute. You know, because the once saved, always saved stuff. It really does exist in the seven day Adventist church. And, and it really has to exist just looking at the way the structure of the church is. They got to get the money out your pocket. So if they can make you feel like a Christian, they can also make you feel like you have an obligation to return tithes to them. That's one of the whole reasons for the once saved. Always say, and, and my seven day Adventist friends, they don't know it, but it's built inside that religion. It really is. By hook or by crook, it don't matter. It really is built inside of that. Because if you look at the history of the, um, if you look at the history of this uh, seven day Adventist church, it really evolved from, it, it really, it really came about through people who were of mixed denominations. So Calvinists were a part of it as well. Methodists and Lutherans and Baptists and, 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 and so on and so forth. So that's basically how, you know, the Seventh-day Adventist church, you know, it's a mixing, a, a, a mixed bag of, you know, people that came together that basically formed the Seventh-day Adventist church, you see. And if you talk to Seventh-day Adventists long enough, You'll be able to hear that once saved, always saved type of, type of language with them always hearkening, to, uh, uh, referencing uh, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And that basically means in the Seventh-day Adventist church, the same thing it means in every other denomination. Hey, it's no condemnation if you say you're in Christ. And if you believe in Jesus, there's no condemnation. So bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse. I mean, I mean, come on, y'all. The whole reason why these churches got to make everybody feel that they are Christian, they born again, they going to heaven. They got to get the tithe and the offerings and all these other building fund expenses that they always are using as a big fat thermometer in the front of the church. They got to use that stuff. It's a marketing ploy. It's a way to rest your wallet out of your knuckles. You see? So Proverbs 22, 6, it's not saying that just because you gave your child a Bible when they were three years old and you equate that as training them up, that they're not going to go to hell. That's not what it's saying. It's, look at this. People always, 
these churches always put this huge emphasis on a free will. But when they are quoting Proverbs 22, 6, they never bring that to bear on this top, on this text. The child has to submit by free will and not because they don't want to go to hell, but because they love God and they're, 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 they're amazed by the kingdom that he has prepared for them. And they love soul winning. But I noticed that when people uh, cite Proverbs 22, 6, they never bring up the free will and how it bear, lays, bear, lays to bear on this text. Never, ever. It's always about what somebody else did for you in the way of your parents. Well, they took you to Sunday school. It's, don't that sound like works righteousness to you? Well, I took them to, I, I sent them. Some of most parents, you know, they don't even send their child, uh, uh, go to church with their children. They send their children to Sabbath school and Sunday school. Well, and I, you know, I gave you all the Christian training I could give you. I sent you to Sunday school. I sent you to Sabbath school. And so that means the scripture told us in Proverbs 22, 6, you, when you're old, you're not going to depart from it. When it says, oh, not depart from it, it means young too, people. It would have to mean that. It would have to mean. It means that this person has lived a life consistently as a young person, and when they're old, they're going to stay consistent. It don't mean they're going to backslide as a young person when, they're, when they want to sow their wild oats in their flesh the passions and the hormones and the testosterone starts getting at a a, a, a a copious quantity that then they're going to backslide. But when they old, they're going to come back. That's what you got the church full of now. It's full of old people who got one foot on a banana peel and one foot in the grave. That's that's it. And I'm going to say it this way. You, the churches right now are basically filled with and financed with people who got one foot on a banana peel in hell and one foot in the grave. I mean, come on, people. Why do you think that these churches are so filled with old people? They scared of going to hell and they shape and they face don't look the way it looked when they was 20. So they're like, OK, I'll give myself to Jesus. Man, boy, I used to have fun when I was young. Because if you look at these old people, you don't see them going around knocking on doors. Now, the ones that do go knock on doors are older, but you don't see them going out like a like kamikaze knocking on doors and passing out tray. You don't see it, people. You don't see it. They're retired. They're not shaped the way that they were shaped. They 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 not young. They basically settled, many of them, in a, a life of sin. And so what they do, they don't have nothing else to do. They go to church. They go to church. I'm not saying all. I didn't say all. The vast majority, though. And just look at Rwanda and you will see that. But anyway, this is Prophet Six, family prophet to the angel of the church of the lay of the scene. God bless you. You have a good morning and have a wonderful Sabbath. Oh, yeah. And there's going to be a, the Sabbath school lesson. I'm going to do something on the Sabbath school lesson. I'm going to review the Sabbath school lesson today because everybody in the seven day Adventist church is going to be reviewing it tomorrow. And I'm going to make a video on that. Just that. Sorry, the video is too long. I wish I could do a, a five minute video, you know. But anyway, hey, that's how the spirit led me. But uh, I would like to do a, a shorter video. God bless you. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, boy. Snap again.